Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Kellen and today I'll be going over 10 cancelled champions that you never knew about. Whether it's the Hydro Soul named Soterios or the Plant King named Gavid, we will make sure to keep you guys in the loop about Riot's secret champion developments. Also guys, today's question of the day is which type of champion would you like to see join the Rift? For me, I would love to see a Witcher style champion who uses a variety of weapons and potions to enhance his strength. Let us know your answers in the comments down below, but before we get started, are you always getting ganked, constantly demolished? Well, don't worry, we've got you covered. Pro Guides is the number one proven way to quickly level up your League of Legends skills. Whether you're looking for tier lists, champion guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Nightblue, Bunnyfufu, Boxbox, and Lokodoko support Pro Guides. So, what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description down below and start improving right now. Now, with that stuff being said, let's jump into the video. Starting off at number 10, we have Taboo, the Voodoo Shaman. Taboo was first discovered in the beta files during the early days of League. This meant that he was planned to be a part of the original 40 champions who were released alongside the game, but was eventually cancelled before ever hitting the live servers. Thematically, he seems to be inspired pretty heavily from Zarvako, who is known as the Witch Doctor from Dota 2. There was a little bit of his lore that was revealed before his official cancellation in 2010. It states that as one of the few remaining voodoo shamans of Jugos, Taboo took it upon himself to educate the populace of the culture's twisted and remarkable powers. Traveling from town to town with local gypsies, Taboo acquired a large collection of shrunken heads, shriveled ears, and wispy vials which held living souls. That's a little bit weird and creepy, but Taboo's actual kit was revealed in the beta files and it goes like this. His passive was called Enfeeble, and it creates an aura which makes enemies near him deal 15% reduced damage. Next up, his Q was called Tattoo, and it allows Taboo to link to an enemy or an allied champion for 20 seconds. If you're linked to an enemy, 50-90% to of the damage taken by either is shared with the other, while linked to an ally, 50% to 90% of the healing received is shared with the other as well. Taboo's W is called Circle of Ancestors, which curses a target area and deals damage to enemy units inside of it while healing other allied ones. This ability did 100 to 300 damage if you hit an enemy, or healed 50 to 150 if you hit an ally. Next up, his E is called Pacify. This ability is basically the equivalent of Lulu's Polymorph, except it would pacify you for 4 to 6 seconds. Holy crap, that would have been busted. A hard CC ability that long is unheard of from one ability in League of Legends. Lastly, his ultimate was called Soul Drain, and it let Taboo tether himself to a target and attempt to steal its soul, dealing 75 to 150 to it while regenerating for the same amount each second. Overall, his kit seems unique, but also insanely broken. Imagine having a point-and-click CC ability which prevents you from doing anything for 4 to 6 seconds. That would just break the game. However, rumor has it that Taboo was actually never cancelled, and instead he was just completely changed into the pre-rework version of Swain. He does have a lot of visual and gameplay similarities, so it does make a lot of sense. What do you guys think? Was this champion broken, and do you actually think that Riot reworked him into Swain? Let us know. Much like Taboo, Gavid was discovered in the early beta files of League, but was ultimately cancelled due to his theme not really fitting in with the game. A little bit of his lore was released, however, and it states that, born into the world as a tiny sprout, Gavid spent much of his life basking in the rich soil near the Demacian Empire. The fertile ground allowed Gavid to grow at an incredible rate. As Gavid's jungle of thorns and vines grew larger, it drew nearer and nearer to the tended gardens of the Demacians. Soon, human foresters arrived in Gavid's territory. Wielding brutal axes, they began to slash their way through the jungle, destroying seedlings and woodland that had taken decades to grow. Soon, most of his friends and family had been destroyed, hacked into firewood, and carried off by the uncaring humans. His lore seems to be very inspired from the Ents of the Lord of the Rings series. Much like the Ents, Gavit is a tree-like being who joins the war with the intent of destroying the humans who have killed his loved ones. Now, let's cover his abilities. Gavin's passive is called Vine Generation. Gavit spawns a small vine within the area every two seconds. We're not actually sure what these vines did, but you can kind of guess it's probably similar to Zyra's plants. Next up, his Q was Thorns, and it allowed Gavid and his vines to inflict damage to only melee champions upon being struck. His W was called Animate Thorn Splitter, and it consumes a vine, turning it into a Thorn Splitter plant that fires thorns at nearby enemies. Next up to his E, Animate Entangler, and it also consumed a targeted vine, 
causing it to explode into a mass of roots that entangles nearby enemies for a few seconds. Lastly, his ultimate was called Entrench, and it roots Gavin to the ground for a few seconds and heals him based off of his max health over the duration. In addition, Gavin generates an immediate 7 vines, as well as gaining increased vine generation. Additionally, the next basic ability he uses animates all vines within a range. I gotta admit, this is a pretty cool champion, and I'm sad we don't get to see him on the rift today. However, there are obviously some parts of his kit which resembles the old Zyra, so I guess he wasn't totally cancelled. Coming in at number 8, we have Husk, the Hive Commander. Now, unlike the previous two cancelled champions that we went over, this one is confirmed to have been changed into the current version of Camille. She was intended to be a mercenary from Zaun, the leader of a team called Hive, which comprised of the other mercenaries, outlaws, and bounty hunters. Husk was also supposed to be Caitlyn's ex-partner, who defected to Zaun after Caitlyn betrayed her by paralyzing her from the waist down during a shootout. Calm down there, Professor X. I guess that kind of explains the mechanical legs and all that stuff. However, she was eventually split into two different champions that we know today, which is Kaisa and Camille. Can you imagine that though? Can you think about Camille and Kaisa's kid combined into one champion? Yeah, that would be an instant ban. <laughs> Moving on to number 7, we have Priscilla, the Spider Queen. Now, this champion might seem pretty similar to you, and familiar because she is, kinda. Priscilla was in development during the first days of League of Legends, but never made it to the final cut. She was originally called Nidalee, but then her name was changed to Priscilla, and then eventually, well, Elise. In addition to that, there are a lot of clues that her silhouette may have inspired Urgot's pre-reworked design. So let's run down her abilities. Priscilla's passive is called Camouflage, which passively grants her 20% to 80% bonus mana regen. Her Q was called Ensnare, and it basically lobs a net at a small area and immobilizes enemies who were hit by this ability. On top of that, she also drags them back towards her over one second and deals damage per distance moved. Next up, her W was called Inject Spiderlings. This passive on this ability allowed her to inject a target with poison, slowing them by a small amount over four seconds. If the target died while injected, it spawns a spiderling per injected stack from its dead corpse, which lasts up to 60 seconds. Priscilla's E was called Thirst, and it just basically gave her passive lifesteal. Finally, her ultimate was called Corpse Maker, which pins her target down for a few seconds and slashes it rapidly with her front two claws, dealing double damage over a quarter of a second. This champ is quite unique, but I'll be honest, I don't really think this version should have made it into the live servers because I think her kit seems pretty wonky. However, when players did discover that she was cancelled, there was a petition online which received over 24,000 signatures to bring her into the game. However, she was eventually reworked into Elise and released on the live servers in 2012. Next up at number 6, we have Averdrian, the Astral Guardian. As with a lot of others, Averdrian was first seen in the closed beta files back in 2009, however the reason that he wasn't released still remains a mystery. It was initially thought that Averdrian was reworked into Heimerdinger, but Riot Games has never confirmed this to be true. His passive is called Astral Barrier, and it says 4 Astral Spirits. Not really all that helpful, it doesn't say what it's supposed to do. His Q was called Astral Beam, which send a coiled beam of light to an enemy dealing damage. This damage is not preventable. His W was then called Detonate, and it releases a pulse of energy dealing damage around him and slowing enemies within the range. His E was called Consume Spirit. It absorbs one of his spirits, granting him additional damage and an aura dealing damage to each second to nearby enemies. Lastly, his ultimate was called Lockdown, and it ensnared an enemy for 5 seconds and deals damage to a target while also preventing all movement and actions. The thing about this kit is it doesn't really seem like he has a lot of counterplay. From what I can gather, it just feels like he hits you with an unpreventable Annie Q, then has Perma Sunfire Cape damage with a Malzahar ult? Um, no thank you. Coming in at number 5, we have Omen, but he doesn't actually have a champion title. Omen is described to be a quadruped demon-like creature who is also from the Void. Now, by the looks of it, he already looks creepy as hell. Although there isn't that much information about his release, a rioter did confirm that he was cancelled due to the lack of character direction at Riot. They couldn't decide if he was supposed to be a ranged DPS champion or a melee champion, which caused him to remain in limbo for quite a while. Eventually they realized that they weren't progressing with this kit and eventually scrapped the project. However, a very vague script of his abilities was released. 
His Q is a skill shot that passes through things. His W was a spike pod lob, which detonated after two seconds, or if hit by it, or by Q. His E was a targeted spell, which deals damage and slows the target, and his ultimate was a channeling long-ranged AoE zone damage ability, similar to a mix of Gangplank and Misfortune ults. Coming in at number four, we have Ao Shin. This champion was first revealed to the community in 2013, but was eventually released as Aurelian Soul in 2016. Although both of them are dragons, their concepts are actually pretty different, and a lot of players still believe that Ao Shin deserves a spot in this game. Ao Shin is a very powerful storm dragon and a guardian to the natural world. Legend has it that when Ionia faces its greatest threats, Ao Shin will descend from the sky. One of the problems that Riot mentioned about this champion is that he didn't pass muster. They say it's a pretty common problem with the initial stages of champion creation, and either got fixed on the fly or got shelved forever. Luckily for us, we got a small taste of Aoshin through Aurelian Soul, and we might even get an Aoshin skin for our favorite little space dragon. Next up at number 3, we have Well Soterios, the Hydra Soul. During the early beta stages, Soterios was found in some hidden files. Residing in a secluded temple at the edge of the Corbin Sea, Soterios is the self-named High Priest, became notorious in the surrounding area for his daily rituals of rebirth, which he performed on the fearful townsfolk. He pretty much dragged screaming innocent people to the shore and forced them below the thrashing waves until the water filled their lungs and killed them. He would then revive the man by pressing his hands on his chest and making them into an acolyte to the high priest. His kit starts with the passive called Soothing Aura, which gives nearby allies increased mana regen. His Q was called Summon Water Elemental, and there's no other description. His W was called Crushing Wave, which crashes a wave of water through enemies in a line dealing damage. If the wave touches a water elemental, it ends up sending a duplicated wave in the same direction that the elemental is facing. His E is called Vortex, and it creates a vortex of water at a target location that deals damage every second. Enemies moving away are slowed by 90%, and enemies perpendicular to that are slowed by 30%. Lastly, his ultimate torrent creates a heavy downpour that covers the entire map. This increases friendly units' health and mana regen, and all allied champions gain spell damage. So basically this guy feels like a super OP version of Nami mixed with Yorick. Pretty cool concept, but glad that he's not in the game. Then at number 2, we have Earth the Manatee. Earth the Manatee is a cancelled champion which was supposed to be an April Fool's joke. However, ever since its cancellation, Earth has now become a mascot for League of Legends and continues on through multiple different skin, events, and other League-related things. In his admiration and pursuit to become a weapons master like Jax, Earth has equipped himself with the two great symbols of his manatee heritage as his weapons, a fish and a spatula. Earth now begins his aquatic journey as League of Legends' first manatee champion, hoping one day that he will have the opportunity to cross fish and spatula with the chicken's foot and lamppost. But of course, this was obviously an April Fool's joke, so he was never released. Poor guy. Before we get into the final cancelled champion, we have one honorable mention which is CC, also known as Braum. And yes, before Braum was a muscular, handsome man, he was this small girl holding a gigantic weapon. There isn't a whole lot of information about CC, but I think it'd be pretty cool if they ended up releasing her later on. And lastly, at our number one spot for cancelled champions, we have Rob Blackblade, the adventurer. Rob Blackblade was pulled because he didn't really fit into the game's theme. On top of that, the design team didn't really get inspiration from him, so no aspect of Rob was deemed worthy of keeping. Eventually, he was totally trashed, and Udyr took his place in the champion cycle. So, here are his abilities. His passive was called Liberate, and there's no description for it. His Q was called Gut Buster, which makes Rob throw a knife at a target, dealing damage, and can critically strike for three times the amount of damage. Rob's W was called Ambush, and it makes him go stealth, gaining movement speed, very similar to Pike. Next up, his E was called Vital Blow, which lets Rob do a ton of damage to the opponent, and if he hits the target while stealth, he also stuns the target. If Rob is visible, then he puts the target to sleep. Stun duration is about half the time of the sleep duration. Finally, his ultimate was called Bravado, and it makes all of his attacks critically strike for the next 5 to 11 seconds. This champion was like this version of Evelyn, Pike, Annie, super point and click, and busted his crap. And the fact that he gets a 6 second CC with his E ability and making his autos permanently crit for 11 seconds is just broken. I kind of see why Riot didn't really have a direction here. It kind of feels like they gave him everything and didn't really make it all flow together. He just beat you up. 
Anyway, that's going to be it for our 10 cancelled champions that you never knew about. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to be notified of our next videos. Make sure you check out our website for in-depth content and guides that were made by your favorite pro players. The second part of our meta-analysis video will be available next week, which will bring you the most accurate tier list available using fresh statistics. So thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you on the Rift.